Hey guys, welcome to the video series of data engineering on Microsoft Azure DP203. Hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. In today's video, we will be covering archiving in Azure. So without further ado, let's start. And we will be covering um, designing an archive solution and, and we will do the implementation too. So here's the introduction and uh, this is just basic knowledge. What is archive and why we need it? or you can say what are the use cases for it. Archive is basically moving the data into a storage um, or in a place where we don't have to access this very frequently. Uh, and the data is still important. Uh, the use case, uh, uh, the classic use case is the regulatory standards or compliance. Most business use data archive for legacy data or data that uh, required to keep in order to meet the regulatory requirements. Archive in like a different data storage of Azure. So Azure Data Lake Gen, here we're going to see how we can manage the life cycle of the data in storage account, or you can say the retention policy or how we can do archive the data. Uh, in life cycle, like data goes from uh, various access tiers and before it get deletes. Uh, Azure SQL, like um, here the archiving is done by exporting uh, and storing the data into Azure Data Lake Gen 2. It's simply, and after, once the data is stored in the Azure Data Lake Gen 2, the same approach will be used for the uh, uh, Azure SQL 2. And the Azure Snaps Analytics and Cosmos DB don't have any built-in or like uh, out of the box uh, capabilities for archiving, um, but it, they have like other options uh, uh, which in which like in Cosmos DB we can use uh, TTL that is like time to live for retention which is defining how long we want to keep the data and data will be deleted automatically after that uh, that's uh, but still it don't have a like a life cycle management kind of thing which we have in Azure Data Lake Gen 2 like where you can go from different access tier or like different uh, st storage type you can say from uh, hot to cold and then archive and then delete uh, in Cosmos DB, uh, like after a certain time, you have to delete it. Like that's a capability available. And uh, similarly for the Azure Snaps Analytics, like we can delete data uh, using, uh, like by writing a custom uh, store proc or the delete commands uh, that, okay, delete any data after, let's say, let's say certain inserted dates or certain time. But that's uh, uh, that's like one way of retentioning the data or like you can say implementing the retention policy or even archiving the data. But it, here too, like we don't have a, a life cycle kind of uh, capability where like you can go through the different access years. Uh, now, next is the implementation on Azure Archive, like implementation of Archive in um, Azure Data Lake Gen 2. Let's go to the, yeah, perfect. So you basically need an as a, uh, like a storage account and uh, there uh, you need one container and you can upload a file to that. Okay, let me go there. I already created the storage account. I have a container too with the name raw and I have a file in it. Uh, before we look into the lifecycle management or like we, we, we look how we can do things um, uh, at a, like a blog, like at, a, at a, a storage account level or at a container level, you can like literally move one second. Sorry, yeah. You, like if you select a blob, you can change its uh, tier from here to directly from hot to cold and archive. But this is like more manual, uh, and it's not like a, it's not sustainable. Like it, it's it's uh, it's for one off kind of situations, but uh, that's that's not our idea. That's like just. I was doing it just to give you an idea like you can go to a single storage or individual sorry individual blob or a single blob and you can change the access tier there too uh, now let's go to here let's scroll down like click on the your storage account and you can search for lifecycle management or you can scroll down and in data management you can you will be able to find this uh, uh, one second where it goes yeah lifecycle management so here you see I've already created a rule, but like for demo, we're going to create a new rule. We'll click it, we give it a name to it. Let's say for two, 
is the name and then you have to pick the scope of the rule like how you want to apply it like you want to apply it to the all blobs in the storage or on the limited blobs when you say limited blob like we will have to set the filters and we will look into that like how we can do that so let's start with like limited blob and then the blob type like whether it's a blob a blob or append blob and blob subtype like a base sna uh, uh, snapshot or version let's select version 2 and depending on your requirement you can pick uh, uh, blob type and blob subtypes and blob subtype oh, sorry blob type append might not be uh, might not be like eligible for all the actions but uh, uh, like we can like if you want you can look into the documentation but i'm pretty sure like it's not eligible for all the actions and we will see like what is what i mean by actions here next so this is like a, you add a rule so this rule says like if a base blob is last modified like we we give a number so based on your requirement or like the way you want things you um or based on your business uh, uh, retention policies you can pick these days so let's say we are saying after 30 days move we don't want to delete this like we want to move it from hot to let's say cold storage then we can add another rule which says okay after 180 days move it to archive yeah move it to archive then add another which is like after I'll say um, let's say thousand days like three almost three and three years just delete it okay this is for base blob and we have to do the similar thing for the versions blob 2 and here like uh, versions basically like you directly delete them so let's say delete the versions after 90 days click next oh, sorry. and then you can add the filter so basically uh, there's like three types of filters one where like you specify the blob which you want and the other one is the blob prefix where like you give the location name so let's uh, when I say uh, let's say when I, like location means the container name where you want to delete all the so I can say raw uh, yeah that's my folder and click add so you can see now our new rule is added and when you select the rule like this is like you doing it through the uh, interface but there is a code view for it too like if you click on this you will see the code view okay uh, and this now I'm going to explain what, what exactly in the code which is like pretty uh, same what we did but I'm going to explain it to you uh, but uh, the other thing you have to keep in mind like this life cycle runs uh, once a day okay now let's look into the code let's jump to the code so to make your things simple like uh, I have like uh, once again like if you go this is a JSON and I'm going to explain all these things one by one in there okay so here you can see one rule is this for us and this is the 4-2 this is the another rule so there are two rules in there that's why you like it this look a bit longer but let's look into this uh, I have break it down to like I have break it down I'll say step by step to understand it uh, in a better way so the first uh, uh, the first uh, JSON script is like or you can say the first object is is a rule which is an array of uh, rules object so you can see it like it's an array from here to here and it can have as we define multiple rules you you will create an object of it so this is going to be a one rule this is going to be another rule uh, now after that uh, in the second the rule objects have like four keys here like name enable type and definition and the definition um, and any when these have the like name will have the name of the rule then enable will always be true what type of it is like life cycle or something and then in definition you will have um, like uh, another JSON objects uh, which will have key values thing in it so here you can see this is one rule this is another rule and this is an array from here to here you can from these brackets you can 
um, identify this is an array of rules one rule another rule and now the sec and in the third uh, script you can see the definition object have uh, action and filter objects within it and also notice uh, now we have only one element of uh, array no, sorry one element in the rules array i we don't have like two i removed the other one so it's like just one rule from here to here and in that rule name is there enable type definition and definition there are two uh, other object actions and filters now if we go to one another level or the next level in actions you will see there are two other objects which are the types or you can say subtypes of our blob uh, so version and base blob which like when we were like doing it manually like if i go back here i'm sorry when i say manually i mean it's like on the interface you these are the things so if you select snapshot and version in this code you will find a a version object a base blob object and a snapshot object uh, for example i just took two but you get the point like whatever subtype you pick you have to enter here and then after that in the fifth script you can see for each blob type uh like blob subtype basically like version and a base blob we have actions and action run condition basically so there are like some predefined actions. One is delete tier to cool. Oh, sorry, it, uh, yeah, tier to cool, tier to archive. And there's like a couple of more, uh, but uh, you can check the documentation for that. But the idea is like each sub blob will have its own rule, uh, its own action, and the action uh, run condition. So here you can see the here for the version, which was like uh, we we did in our. Uh, interface to like if it's a version just delete it after 90 date of creation and for the base it was like a 30 90 and I put it like uh, 2500 like first go like after 30 days it will go to cool then it will like after 90 days it go to archive and then after uh, 2500 days it will be deleted and last is the uh, filter function which we saw in our uh, uh, GUI too like you have to enter like you either you can use prefix match or there's a blob type too where like you literally enter the name of the blob and prefixes basically you tell like okay this is the um, this is the folder and anything in that folder will be uh, like all the lifecycle management will be applied there and you can see these are the these are both are arrays so you can add like multiple for example in prefix like you can have more um, path in there okay okay let's go back here sorry yeah yeah and now implementation as our sql so that's uh, uh, let's go back again to our portal okay home I go to SO SQL. So SO SQL is going to be very simple, not very complicated. Like as I mentioned earlier, like they don't have uh, like SO SQL also don't have a, a built-in capability. So what we need to do, we need to export uh, like export the export and store those uh, like ex like we need to export it as a back uh, backpack file and store it in the Azure data lake gen 2 and there you can like uh, like use the same um, like life cycle management which we saw just now okay go here so you see here like you go you have to go to your uh, sql database and there is an export button so you click on that then you still like you give it the name of your file azure uh, like you pick your subscription and then you select the storage and you can go directly to wherever like for example we we can go select raw and the um, the rule we created it is already applicable in raw so this like it going to be applicable on this file too and this file type is uh, backpack and after that like you just need to provide your server name and 
password and click OK and it will be exported there. It will take time depending on the, uh, the size of your database. Uh, so recommended is like um, do this activity weekly, I'll say, or uh, depending like the, like how, how big is your database. Uh, I, I'm not going to do it because I don't have anything in there, uh, but it will be stored in the, um, like in a container and you can add the same uh, lifecycle management on the container and your file will be, then it will have the same, um, you can say, uh, same archiving strategy as for the uh, Azure Data Lake Gen 2. Uh, that's that's all for this video. Uh, yeah, that's all for this video. And if um, uh, thanks for watching it, and stay tuned for the next video on uh, in this series. Bye. Take care.